Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dina Wakely Media Journal, the Blue Edition. And today is going to be, I believe, all about collage. And I think I'm going to work on one of these inside pages. I have just been wanting to play with collage. And so that's what's going to happen. Uh, my primary inspiration is this piece that I took from a real simple magazine. So I'm excited to play with it. I have a bunch of tissue papers, some book papers, a lot of napkins, even some fun, you know, holographic doilies. So we'll see what happens. As always, I will link everything that I use down below so you can check it out. Heads up, some of those will be affiliate links. It goes a long way to supporting this channel. So thank you very much for shopping those. All right, I will put you all on fast forward. Let's go. I am pretty sure that I have the smartest subscribers ever on my YouTube channel. Uh, last time I did an art journal video, I was talking about bleed through on this burlap and one of you all suggested using tissue paper to keep colors from bleeding through. And I thought that that was genius. And actually that's what I'm gonna use as the basis for this page. This is actually tissue paper from a friend that was part of a Galentine's gift that she gave me and I loved the stars. And so I'm gonna use it as the basis for this page. And I'm just gonna spread it over these two pages. So the one on the left is kind of a pressed paper feel and then on the right is burlap. They both have some bleed through from a page I did that is adjacent to this. And so this is going to kind of unite the two pages and work to create a seal so that it will keep whatever it is that I add on top of this on these two pages, keep it from bleeding through and kind of messing up my um, other art journal entries. As I'm adding the clear gesso, it does end up covering up a lot of the stars. They get a little bit foggy, but that's okay. This page is all about all of the layers. I have just been really feeling collage lately. I've been spending my evenings kind of cutting things out of magazines and a lot of them I've been just adding into a really simple journal with nothing extra, like no mixed media, just simply cutting things out and pasting them down. And I find it so relaxing. And I think I'll probably go back to that journal at some point and add in some doodles and things like that. But right now, um, it's, it's doing it for me. It's sparking creativity and looking at all of the beautiful images and the magazines I'm just loving. So my favorite magazine to get images from that I can get easily in the United States would be real simple. I have a monthly subscription and I love that. Um, I really like the magazine Flow, but it turns out they are not releasing that magazine in English anymore because of COVID reasons. They were just having all kinds of shipping issues. And um, so that makes me super sad. I hope that someday they will be able to release that again because that is a fabulous magazine for people that love paper and love paper crafting. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's so funny. The basis for this page ends up being um, things from friends. So these are some book pages that a friend of mine uh, antiqued on her own, like in her oven where you add the little bit of lemon juice and kind of yellow up the pages. And she gave me a big stack of them to use in my art journaling because she was using them in her art journaling. And so I'm going to lay these down as kind of a base for where that grouping of flowers can sit. I just felt like it would be weird if it were just floating. Um, so this is going to kind of form a base. There's going to be a bunch of color added on top of this. So I'm not really worried about what the words say. I am more interested in just the texture and a little bit of the words sticking out here and there. Um, you can see I just pasted them down. I'm using clear gesso. I really like the Art Basics gesso. I think it's the best for art journaling. I really, really love it. I would never use anything else now because I'm, I'm in love with that. Um, so I pasted it down and then once it dries just a bit then I trim it out um, adding in some more texture I have these super large doilies and my thought is that the plant the flower bundle will be on the left I'm just going to add some doilies this is kind of like my corner sun up here you can't see it very well right now but its texture will come through later as I add some more paint and then I'm going to add another one right over here just to bring that same texture in and I like it layered on top of the paper so 
again, just collaging, plunking things down and having fun. And then I will cut all of those out around the edge. Okay, so I have super protected my work surface area and now I have some Distress Oxides. I am using milled lavender, bundled sage, and speckled egg and just creating a fun background. Again, it's it's really cool how these mix. I let it dry really nicely. You get a beautiful kind of cloudy effect and some of the stars are even peeking through, which I love from the base paper. So letting that dry and then I'm gonna see, I think that that's going to go over to the left, but I'm not quite done with how the rest of this is going to go. So let me add this on um, again, just so on the back to make sure it sticks. And then I'm going to start layering on top of this piece. So when you are using collage pieces from magazines, I always suggest layering something behind it and over it. It just makes it feel more included on your page. If I did an entire background and then just plop this on top, it would probably feel disconnected. So I definitely wanted to make sure that it felt like part of the page. I'm being really careful to get all of the edges. I want them covered really nicely, sealed really nicely so that they won't start peeling up as I go. Then while the gesso is still wet, I'm actually gonna bring it back in that bundled, bundled stage Distress Oxides just to spray on top again, starting to layer on top just so things feel, uh, feel more cohesive. And then I just use my finger to swipe off one of the lemons because it got covered up and I didn't want it to be green. I wanted it to stay yellow. Speaking of yellow, this is the handmade modern paint from Target. Isn't it? It is an acrylic paint, and I'm just going to use it to add a few art marks. I loved the pops of yellow lemons that were in this flower bunch, and I just kind of want to bring them out and bring that yellow over. It's going to be kind of a diagonal going from the bottom left to the upper right, just adding the little bits of yellow. It ended up being a little bit much for me. The yellow was really bright. So I came back in with this Dina Wakely gloss spray and I'm doing what I call like a half spray. So if you just press it a little bit, you get lots of droplets that come out and I use it in the lavender color and then the white and the white, I kind of concentrate over where those art marks are just to bring them down a notch so that they aren't quite so in your face and bold. I continue to trim off the bits and pieces and let this dry really well. I have soaked to this page. In fact, I'm so impatient. I dry a little bit between layers, probably not enough. But once I was done with this art journal page, I definitely just left it open for 24 hours so it could get all of the way dry. All right, this is my Tim Holtz brick stencil, my favorite stencil, I'm pretty sure. I use it all of the time and I have milled lavender distress oxide ink because um, it matches really well with the milled lavender I've already used. And I'm just using it to add some more texture to the background. I love this look of just pieces of brick kind of coming through in different areas. One of my favorite looks, I definitely rushed a little bit. So this ends up getting some different colors of ink. And then right here, you're going to see I get yellow paint and it starts to go all over the place, but that's okay. No worries on art journal pages. Things happen. In fact, I have a pretty big oops later on. Um, so stay tuned to the end to see what I did that nearly ruined this whole page. All right, I'm filling in this last little corner. Again, I just kind of moved it around the page um, just to give a little bit more purple on the page, which I absolutely love. And now I'm gonna anchor the page with one of my favorite techniques, and that is just adding a border. So these are actually Arteza markers that I've had for a while, really fine line, and I'm using my ruler just to kind of sketch a border. I'm not really worried if it's a perfectly straight or perfectly smooth line, because I'm gonna go back and add a bit of a wave to it. But this is a really fun technique for grounding a page. So you certainly can um, leave the border off and you kind of imagine the page just keeps going and going, but I happen to really like the borders because I feel like it brings your focus in towards the center of the page. So I did a dark green as the straight line and now I'm coming back with a purple and kind of adding this wave line. And to me, I was thinking kind of like a branch, kind of natural organic looking shape. And it's just waving back and forth over the green line, bringing purple in a little bit more um, and just adding an imperfectness to that straight line, which I really like. 
of course, because art journaling is so rarely perfect. It never quite ends up as planned. And sometimes that's for the better and sometimes not. Um, but that's really kind of the joy of art journaling. So loving getting back into it. And this page was different for me, definitely some different colors than I would normally go. I'm normally much more bright. And this is a little bit more on the pastel side for sure. I'll be honest, I did not have a title for this page in um, in planning it, but as I was working through this art journal page, I was listening to Taylor Swift, and I love the song um, where she says, at least I'm trying, and that is just something that I tell myself all the time. At least I'm trying. I'm trying my best, and so I am using my pencil to sketch that out, and then I'll come back with an acrylograph. Uh, marker that's in a dark purple, a really deep purple, and trace over that so that it stands out. I was going for more of a slanted look to my lettering, and I'm not sure that I totally achieved that, and that that's okay. Lettering is something that I really am working on. I've been working nearly every day of 2021 on my lettering, and it is getting better. It's just I am I have trouble when I try to change it up on purpose. So I really wanted it to be a little more spread out and leaning, and that's not quite what I ended up with. I come back and decide to add just a little more boldness to my downstrokes. The acrylograph pens are not lettering pens per se, so um, you you can't just press harder on the downstrokes. You're going to have to come through and do that faux calligraphy look. So working my way through, um, sometimes the ink flows just a little bit too fast. So I actually got a little too bold on the top and I will end up coming. And here it is. You guys, look what I did. I wanted to spray this eggplant in the drip fashion and I just pressed it and then panicked because did you see that big splotch of craziness? So I ran over and got a baby wipe to try to wipe it off. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to add some more. So I just sprayed the baby wipe with the same spray and um, put some magenta around the page, added some more gloss spray up there, but it's a little too pink. Um, it was I was so mad at myself. I could have kicked myself because I was loving the page and then I had to mess it up. So adding a little brick up there, I th it covers up fine. It In the end, I don't notice. I'm just so mad that I didn't plan ahead, that I just sprayed willy-nilly all over a beautiful layout. But you know, never give up. Even if something goes wrong on an art journal page, just take a breath and keep going until you love it. And that is it for this art journal entry. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have listed all the supplies I use down below, so make sure to check those out as well. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative. <music>